it's about time we add a second video to our Will It Fry playlist. In the first video, we microwaved a CPU. Definitely fried. In this video, I have an i3-7350K, which should not exist. It's a stupid processor. Don't buy it. More details somewhere around here. We're going to swap thermal paste, which is kind of like the interface between a heat source and a heat sink, with this right here, a thermal pad. Now for those of you new to this scene, thermal paste or thermal grease is sandwiched between typically a CPU heat spreader and a large CPU heat sink or a water block, something that helps bridge the gap between the heat source, which is the CPU itself, and what is supposed to dissipate the heat, the heat sink. The compound in here and other variants is supposed to be a great conductor of heat. That's the point, by the way, to transfer heat from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. But thermal pads, which do the same thing in essence, are not spec the same. These are meant more for VRMs, VRAM modules, things that get hot but not, you know, 100 degrees Celsius hot. So the mitigation technique is the same, but you wouldn't want to use this between a CPU and a heat sink. But we're gonna do it anyway in this video. Okay, so in goes the CPU. Now we're going to run two tests. One will be, of course, our control. Our control test will consist of just typical thermal paste application. We're going to use some Noctua NTH1 here. It's good thermal uh, thermal grease. So we're going to slap some of this on, and then we're going to use the Cryorig C7 to cool the CPU. And then after we've run our tests, we'll run a few benchmarks to CPU synthetics. We'll record temperatures. Uh, we will remove the cooler, remove the thermal paste, and then apply the thermal pad. And in case you're wondering, this is three millimeters thick. So here we go with the control test first. Slap some of that on there. All right. In before the, oh, that's too much thermal grease, bro. Or that's too little, man. You should have put more than that. It's fine. Trust me, it's fine. Don't forget to remove your warning label. All right, slap this one right on top there. All right, good to go. That's literally all we need to do. Now let's uh, plug it in and run some benchmarks. This is a beautiful LED combo, by the way. Okay, Cinebench first. Remember, this is with the thermal paste, so temperature should be completely fine here. Running at stock frequencies, by the way, and the fan curve is just whatever the fan curve was in the system BIOS out of the box. Okay, so max temperature with Cinebench was right at 60 degrees Celsius. So we will take note of that. By the way, if you're wondering, Cinebench score uh, at stock speeds 4.2 gigahertz turbo boost was 454 CB. Let's go ahead and exit out of that one now. I'm uh, sure we can save that. Now, you're, you're probably wondering why on earth I'm running benchmarks and not just IDA64, which is kind of like a CPU stress test. That's because if this CPU does thermal throttle at all, we will see uh, actual like differences in scores. So that's just something else to reiterate here. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but it's likely uh, that it will. And it's probably gonna thermal throttle when we swap the paste for those thermal pads. All right, and now Geekbench, here we go. It's so the highest temperature running Geekbench 4. It was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it is time to swap the thermal grease on top of the CPU spreader here for a thermal pad. Not sure if I said this already, but don't try this at home. Big waste of time, not worth it, period. We're gonna clean off the thermal paste here and on the CPU cooler, and then just slap one of these pads on there. I'll try to cut it down to size, about the size of the die itself. All right, let's see, something like that. Yeah, that should do. No, not a bad size. Oh, this almost, this almost hurts. It would hurt if I cared about the CPU. CPU's stupid though, so I don't really care. All right, got the CPU cooler back on there and uh, plugged in. Let's so go ahead and give it a go. All right, so right off the bat, idle temperatures are a bit higher. We were in the low 30s before. Now we're in the low 40s. And Cinebench, here we go. Okay, temperatures are going up and up. Uh, we're in 70, 72, 74, 75, 76. This is not good. 77, 79, Jesus, 80, 91 degrees Celsius, 92, please, 92, uh-oh. Okay, so things are freaking hot right now, 92 degrees Celsius, 94, we've almost hit T-junction, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, this is not good at all. Okay, now I'm going to rerun Cinebench because our score was pretty much the same here. Our score was 451 CB, which was only four lower than our previous run, so because the CPU is nice and toasty now. I'm going to rerun Cinebench to see if we can uh, instigate that thermal throttling we were talking about earlier. Well, uh, on that run, exactly the same score, 451 
again, so uh, we're not thermal throttling, and if we are, it's, I mean, it's barely happening uh, because our score is basically the same. It's kind of weird. I assume that if we had kept running the Cinebench test over and over, eventually it would have thermal throttled. You can see this is basically both Cinebench runs here. Uh, so we would approach the T-junction and once we hit it, it would probably throttle by about five to 10% to keep the temperatures uh, around 90, 95 degrees Celsius, any more than that. And uh, yeah, not good for the CPU. So it makes sense that we're barely throttling. If, if we didn't have any thermal pad at all, uh, any thermal interface between the CPU and the heatsink, I imagine we would thermal throttle almost immediately. All right, and max temperature for Geekbench 4 looks like was about 69 degrees Celsius. So that's about 14 degrees higher uh, than it was with our control test. The thermal pad looks to be in pretty good shape though, so there's that. Now there are a couple things we could take away from this weird experiment. You might be wondering why the heck we even bothered trying it out because I was curious mainly, but you can also learn a thing or two here. The first is that both of these are still good mediums of exchange between heat sources and heat sinks. The second is that you should use this for your CPU and not this. I mean, you could still use this, I guess. I mean, you'd have a lot of thermal throttling issues. You'd probably have a very loud system because your fan would be compensating for all that heat that's not being dumped from your CPU. Uh, and, but the thing about CPUs nowadays is that they're so well engineered that it's difficult to force a CPU to overheat and explode or you know shut your whole system down. There are so many fail safes built into these systems, into these CPUs nowadays that it's gonna be pretty difficult to, uh, to just fry one. So with that, I guess it didn't fry and that's kind of to be expected at this point, but uh, I have a few more things up my sleeve for a couple other videos in the future on this playlist. I think I'm going to try overvolting the CPU, maybe like three volts or something ridiculous. See if we can kill the CPU then. I don't know. Suggest things in the comments. We'll see what we can do to kill the i3-7350K. With that, if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Click subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.